All right, so I opened up my PNG. I gave myself 30 by 40 inches, the largest printing press paper. Around it, I cropped down to what felt comfortable uh, using shift and option as I shrank so that it stayed centered on my spot illustration. And then I made a perfect square using the, um, the rectangular marquee tool, starting in a little bit from both sides. I actually used the edges of my cursor to define it. And then hold down shift so it was a perfect square, like so. And then to keep it a perfect spacing, I then did Command-T to transform it and just pulled it down. I gave myself a little bit of extra spacing at the bottom. Then I duplicated that selection onto this new layer. And now I made the mistake at the end of the last video of just doing Edit Fill, but that's not what I wanted to do. Instead, what I wanted to do was double click on that and then do a color overlay of 50% gray. Now by doing that, and 100%. Now by doing that, I've given myself a border because these are the main elements of a poster. You have the foreground image, the positive space, you have the negative space of the color of the poster or the texture you're using, and then you have a border that's around it. The border is like a sticker, it's portable context. It's really expensive to print a poster and then have it trimmed down so that it doesn't have any border, right? So it's better to design with the border and you understand it. Our printers can't print full bleed all the way to the edge, right? You would have to cut it down in order not to have a border. So we want to design it with one in mind. Now that we have this color overlay of gray, what we could do is just right click and say rasterize layer style, and that just turns it into a gray square. And then I use that gray square with my move tool to snap my guides. So now I know the area of my background and everything else around it is going to stay clean, right? Now we could always design it without the border and then just add a border later, but it would actually affect some of the decisions we make. So it's helpful to see the border as we work. And then sometimes I often do this. I will select the whole of that interior space and I will say select inverse and then I will paste that, or I'll duplicate that for my blank white layer, and then I'll put that on top of everything. So these are all kind of optional, but that way I can have the border floating on top of everything else. So border, white edges, spot illustration, background, and then blank white underneath. Now, sometimes a flat background works great. You might want to do a gradient, right? You might want to do something that's more straightforward. It matches the lighting. You know, there's all kinds of different methods you can do. But before we go too much further, I want to start designing the next element that our poster needs to have for this assignment. And that's text. We need to design type. So it's totally up to you what type you want to use. You can just do melting macabre if you want. You can do um, something more particular. I think I might do both. So I'm thinking with a new, um, above my spot illustration, I'm going to do a new layer. And I'm going to call this uh, type blocking or text blocking. I'm going to take a paintbrush. We haven't really used the paintbrush tool much. And I'm going to use something really bright, like a bright red. And I'm going to pick under the tool options um, the hard round pressure size brush. It's the, uh, the fourth brush down from the default set. I'm going to keep the hardness to about 20%. Actually, no, I'll go more to like 80%. And then it's size, big enough so I can see it, about the size of what I think a pencil eraser would be on that poster, because it's pressure sensitive. 
Okay, now I can just start drawing in. So I'm thinking I'm going to have some text maybe here, kind of art, like a rainbow, right? And I think what that text might be, maybe it'll be in two sections. So maybe it'll be melting. With, with a big M and a big G, and then maybe macabre here. Right? And then I can duplicate that and maybe try something else. Maybe I'll add underneath it, like a little tag, my, and then belittled, kind of like uh, the My Little Pony text, my belittled donkey in the corner. So something more general, something more specific. You might just have one word that you want to place with your, with your image. Okay, this is why it's called text blocking. If I think that's a good solution, then I need to start breaking it out into the actual shapes before I, I choose the actual typeface or the letter forms. But I might want just another solution altogether. So what about something more like this? What if melting was broken up that way and then macabre was kind of this and dripping down and more organic, right? And then I had that text, right? So you can have multiple types, multiple versions. What if I want something really clean? So I just text, I block my text like this. And then the, each of these little blocks would have letter forms. Right? And then I might do my subtext like this. Now, why do we need to have a sense of how we're doing it for our poster? Well, because that's going to have a lot to do with what typeface we choose. If we want it to be angular, if we want it to be modern, if we want it to be hand done, if we want it to be broken up, if we want it to uh, have lots of embellishments, or if we want it to be really uh, clean, if we want it to be thin or bold, it helps just to kind of draw out solutions that you think are, are nice. All right. So now... I'm going to turn off the gray, and I'm going to use uh, just what I think is the closest to what I'll probably end up using. So what do you guys like better? This one or this one? So they'll both have them. The melting macabre will be up here. This is just clean, then organic. Clean, then organic. But I think the organic here and the organic here will be a little sloppier than this. So I'm leaning towards this. All right, you guys are not committed. What, that one? Yeah, I like that. So I'm going to do this one. All right, so now what do I do? I turn off my spot illustration so I just see the text. This is the new element I need to create. And I'm going to save that as my sketch. Now you can also just do this in your sketchbook, but it's really nice to have the proportion control that you get with the computer for laying things out. So this is now my text blocking sketch. And that's going to be the first thing I upload. And if I'm worried about not getting, getting it turned in on time, our critique deadline for this is... November 12th, so in one week, right? But November 12th is also when you're giving your presentations. So if you want to just have something something in the folder and ready to go, it's not, not a bad idea to just do a JPEG of your sketch. Okay, so there I have it. Now I'm going to open that up in preview and just turn it on down here. And now I need to start creating vector text. And this is going to go into a new folder which is my assignment eight folder. 
Now, sometimes we start sketching and we can't stop sketching. We like how it looks so much that we sketch our own uh, solutions, you know, for a spot illustration, or in this case, for the logo I did for assignment six. And sometimes we really like mixing different typefaces. So these are all hand done fonts. But then when I did extinct, and then I added that little underline, because I wanted it to kind of look like bird bones, like very graceful, I realized I could use that to make this. So instead of this, I'll use this. And then we can do it we can vectorize it in lots of different ways. I can ink it and then take this into Illustrator, live trace it, get a type solution, or I can do this, which is in Illustrator. I guess I'll open it up in Illustrator. Um, I can find a typeface that's close to what I was thinking, right? And then I can work with it in Illustrator to get the, a similar feel, right? So this is hand done, but there are typefaces out there available to use. We often call them fonts, right? But fonts are actually variations on a typeface. When you bold something, that is a font change. When you italicize something, that is a font change. A typeface is the actual design of the letter forms. And there are digital artists that that's how they make their whole careers. They are typographers. You know, they design vector type. And for that reason, almost any type under the sun is available to you if you're willing to pay for it. Because type designers sell them. The only ones that aren't are ones that are copyrighted by companies and held as trademarks. So unless it's trademarks, you, you can use the typeface. And a trademark is the exact text in the exact way, right? So my little pony is an interesting one where I could try to just draw it, but I'm guessing there are people that have done My Little Pony themed parties and designers that created fonts that are useful. So there is a great site that will tell us what font we want or what typeface rather we want. And it will also tell us which ones are free that are close. So this is an invaluable resource. It's in the assignment sheet, this site. And it's called Defont. And I know some of you are familiar with it. So I want you to go to Chrome, and I want you to, to just do a regular Google search, not an image search, just a regular Google search. And I want you to take your text, or what you think your text is inspired by. So mine is My Little Pony. And then I want you to just type in D-A-F-O-N-T, My Little Pony Defont. Then open link in new tab, open link in new tab. All these open link in new tab are different discussions. So one option is this one, where people are saying this is a pretty good font you can use. And it's because it's on the default site, it's actually free for personal use, which is perfect for education, right? If I want to try it, just hit download. This is safe and you have administrative, you don't, you don't need administrative privileges to, to put a font onto a computer or a typeface onto a computer. But this one's even help, more helpful. So someone posted this, this is what I like. They posted pretty much the logo that I wanna imitate, right? My own version of it, a mashup. And then they identified that font as one called Cream Puff. So if I open that in a new tab, I can look for that. And so yes, that's Cream Puff. Is it free? It is free. That's so nice. So that's for the my part of it. So I can download that. Even though that's not from default, there are lots and lots of free um, typeface sites. Notice I'm in Chrome, so I can see that those zip files are downloading. But then they also suggest one. And this is a, a font called My Little Pony. And I can download that. And then let's see the next. Yeah, so you'll also find the ones that that cost money, right? Now, here's the thing. If I'm doing this poster for a company, 